All right, we are now on the next page of the review, page three. Um, this one is looking at parallelograms. So this is asking us to find the value of each variable in the given parallelogram. Uh, remember that parallelograms are certain properties that we talked about, really only uh, three, one related to the angles. Uh, we talked about angles that are opposite on the inside. They're always congruent, and those that are next to each other are supplementary. They add to 180 degrees. Uh, then we talked about the outside of the parallelogram, and we talked about these sides right, are equal in length. It's like a rectangle, so these two would be congruent. Um, <clears throat> and then we also talked about diagonals. Diagonals of a parallelogram, they always cut each other in half. So this piece here would be equivalent to this piece here, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we're just applying those properties, uh, looking at these four problems right here. Uh, again, on 15, we are given two opposite angles, and we know that opposite angles have to be the same. They're congruent. They're both nice little obtuse angles, uh, and they are equivalent, so we just set them equal to each other. We say 100 would be equal to the 12x minus 8. Once you've set it equal, uh, then you can solve. Uh, we just isolate the variable, so we add 8 to this side and get 108 equals 12x. If we want x by itself, we divide the 12, um, and we end up getting x is equal to 9. So that's the value that would make those two angles equivalent there. Uh, on the next one, this is actually the same, so very similar. We're just practicing it one more time. You would set those equal um, and then solve, and I'm going to skip over that one because it is the same process. Number 17, uh, this one looks a little bit different, uh, but again, we know that angles that are next to each other are supplementary, and angles that are opposite each other are congruent. So you'll notice that you have 112 on this corner right here. Uh, this one over here must also then be 112. So we can conclude pretty quickly that y is also equal to 112. Now the diagonal cutting through the middle, uh, we know that if these are parallel, so remember that little parallel symbol there, uh, then this diagonal cutting through is just a transversal. So this right here is coming through, um, and these angles would need to be equivalent. So once we find x, we've actually found z. Um, however, to find this angle, so if we want to find out what this angle would be, again, this is supplementary with its consecutive angle, so the one next to it in the parallelogram. So if this one's 112, then this one would be 180 subtract 112. Um, if we subtract 112 from 180, then we are going to end up with 68. Now if that whole angle is 68 degrees there, and this little side is 40 degrees, uh, then z must be equal to 28 degrees to complete that angle. And again, if z is 28, this guy over here is its alternate interior angle, so x must also be 28 degrees. So those are the angles that we would find there. Again, just applying those few properties. Uh, number 18, again, relates to the diagonals. Uh, just remember that this section of the diagonal needs to be equal to this section if they're going to bisect each other. That means cut in half. So 3g needs to be equal to 9, and we know that the only thing that multiplies there would be as if g is 3. So that would be our answer there. Uh, same idea with the other diagonal. So this needs to be equal to this piece. Um, we would set 3f plus 5 equal to 4f, and then we would solve that. So if we want to isolate the variable, we move all the variable to that side, and we get 5 is equal to... 1f, or just f. So that leaves us with those two variables there. Um, the next one is related to Venn diagrams, once again, revisiting them. Um, and it looks like this represents different classes that are being taken by 10th grade students. So we're just going to walk through these really quickly. Um, it says, determine the total number of 10th grade students. Now, we were often given the total, and we created the Venn diagram. This one, again, is working backwards. This gives us the Venn diagram. We need to add the total up. So remember, every section on here uh, represents a group or a number of students. And so if we add up all of those, we add 70, we add 3, plus 5, oh, that's 15, plus 5, 
plus 85, and we add all of these up, that gives us the total number of students that would be involved there. And in this case, it's going to be 260 students if you didn't already add those up. Um, jumping to the next one, it says determine the percentage of students at this high school that are not enrolled in Spanish, chemistry, or math. So remember, those that are not involved in those groups is this guy out here. Um, so those five students. And again, it asked for a percentage, so we need to do it out of the total, um, which is about 0 0.0192. So as a percentage, that's only uh, 1.9 or 1.92 percent of the students or of the group. Uh, if one student is chosen at random, what's the probability the student is taking Spanish? So the only thing we're looking for here is Spanish. So remember, <coughs> um, all students within the Spanish circle are taking Spanish. So you can't just only include these 70, because these guys are also taking Spanish. So we have to add up all of these values in here. So we add that 73, and we add this 20, um, and that gives us 93 out of the 260 students that are taking Spanish. Um, so again, we could write this as a decimal. We would look at what it specifies. In this case, it doesn't look like it does. Uh, D says, given that a student is taking math, so now we are restricted to only those that are taking math. We stay within the math circle at all times. Um, so we first need to add up that total. Uh, if we add up, we add up 85, we add 60, we add 20. Um, that leaves us with 165. And it says determine the probability, oops, that's going to be my denominator, um, out of those 165 that are taking math, what's the probability they're also taking chemistry? So staying within that circle, um, we're within this circle, uh, but notice these guys are the ones that are taking chemistry as well. So if we add those together, we end up getting 75 out of the 165. Uh, and again, if we want to write that as a decimal, 0 0.455. Fractions are great, too. I like fractions because I can see where you're getting your values. Uh, what percentage of students are taking Spanish and chemistry? Now, remember we talked about and on page 1. Uh, and means the overlap. So students are taking Spanish and chemistry. We come up here uh, again. It doesn't say anything about not taking math. All of those students are enrolled in Spanish and chemistry, so we need to use all 18. And it asks us for a percentage, so we do it out of the total there. Um, and this ends up being 0 0.0692, which would be 6.92%. Okay. If one student is chosen at random, what is the likelihood the student is taking all three courses? Uh, you guys are really good at these ones. We just look in the middle here, right? 15 um, out of the total here, so 260. Uh, and again, that would be about 0 or 0 0.0577. Uh, lastly, determine the probability. Oh, not lastly, if we keep going. Uh, the probability a student is taking Spanish. And remember, this symbol right here means given. So that restricts our denominator. We're not looking at the total anymore. So what's the probability they're taking Spanish given they're not enrolled in mathematics? So if we look up here, <coughs> um, not in math would be all of these guys outside the math circle. So we don't want to go into the math circle, but if we add all of these up, we add um, all of those together, that gives us what our denominator would be. So that ends up being 70. Right, plus 5, 75, plus 3, and 17, which is 20. So we get 95 here as our denominator. Um, and out of that, so again, we're not leaving those 95s. That's our group from here on out. Um, how many of those are taking Spanish? So we look up here, and it looks like only these 73 are within that Spanish circle. So those 73 would be included here in our probability. Um, and then H says, if one student is selected at random, determine the probability they're in Spanish and math. So remember that symbol means and. So again, we come up here, Spanish and math, and is this. So again, we're looking at 20 out of the 260. There is no other restriction on this one. Um, again, the P out front represents probability of that. So we do need to calculate um, out of the total there and make sure we're calculating a probability. 
All right, let's see if we can make it through another one. Um, on the next page, <clears throat> we're looking at the length of the hypotenuse of a triangle is four centimeters. Determine the perimeter of the triangle. Um, leave an exact radical form. Now, my math two honor students, yours needs to be an exact radical form. Uh, my math two students, uh, you're welcome to write this as a decimal. Um, if we look at this piece right here, we're looking at the length of the hypotenuse. This is going to take a while. 